A molecule that beats TNT sounds like a movie plot, yet it just came out of a German lab. In Giessen, researchers captured hexanitrogen N6, a pure nitrogen molecule that should fall apart at once, freeze it to minus 196 degrees Celsius, and it can sit quietly for decades. Warm it up, and it snaps back into normal nitrogen gas, dumping a burst of energy on the way. Some chemists even called the work Nobel Prize worthy. So what is N6? How do you make something this unstable? And why does it matter? Stay with me, step by step, now. Nitrogen. The calm gas. With a locked door, nitrogen is everywhere, and it is easy to ignore. Every breath you take is mostly nitrogen. Earth's air is about 78% nitrogen, and almost all of it is N2 a molecule made from two nitrogen atoms. Those two atoms are tied together by a triple bond, one of the strongest bonds in chemistry. That strength makes N2 extremely stable, and stable usually means unreactive. So nitrogen is perfect when you want a do-nothing atmosphere, like shielding a weld, protecting electronics, or keeping food fresh. It also matters inside you. Nitrogen atoms are part of amino acids, and amino acids build proteins. They also sit in the letters of DNA. But chemistry is full of trade-offs. The same triple bond that makes nitrogen safe also makes it hard to use as a source of energy or new materials. To make nitrogen react, you first have to break that bond, and that takes real effort. Nature can do it with lightning and specialized bacteria. Industry does it with the Haber-Bosch process to make ammonia, using high pressures and heat. So nitrogen is essential for life, yet stubbornly locked in its safest form. That locked door is exactly why a new nitrogen-only molecule is such a big deal, because it suggests we can unlock nitrogen in a totally different way. Polynitrogen, a spring you want to bottle. Now imagine linking more than two nitrogen atoms together. These are polynitrogen compounds, chains or rings built only from nitrogen. On paper, they are simple. In real life, they are slippery. As you add nitrogen atoms, the structure becomes more strained and more eager to relax back into N2. You can think of it like bending a ruler. The harder you bend it, the more it wants to snap straight again. And when it relaxes, it releases the stored strain energy fast. That is the core promise. TNT releases about 4.2 megajoules per kilogram when it breaks down. Many polynitrogen structures are predicted to go well beyond twice that, because the endpoint, N2, is so stable. That means the waste product is basically just air. No carbon skeletons, no soot, no carbon dioxide. Scientists have chased this for decades, but the molecules rarely survive long enough to study. The azide radical, N3, was detected only briefly in the 1950s. In 2002, researchers observed N4, but it was so unstable that it could not be isolated. Larger nitrogen clusters that lasted longer usually needed help, like binding to metals, hiding inside crystal cages, or carrying an electrical charge. So the dream has been clear, but the reality has been harsh. Pure, neutral polynitrogen kept slipping away before anyone could truly hold it and measure it. Hexanitrogen N6, the one they finally caught. The Giessen team changed that story by isolating hexanitrogen N6. This matters for one simple reason. It is neutral, pure nitrogen, and larger than N2. In a basic picture, N6 behaves like two N3 chains linked into a six-atom unit. That link creates an energy barrier, like a speed bump on the path back to N2. It is not a big barrier, but it is enough to catch the molecule under the right conditions. Here is the reality check. At room temperature, N6 lives for about 35 milliseconds on average before it falls apart into normal nitrogen gas. That is shorter than a blink, and it rules out storage or transport in everyday conditions. But at minus 196 degrees Celsius, the temperature of liquid nitrogen, the molecule can remain stable for years and even decades. Some reports even speak about century-scale stability at that temperature. Of course, nobody waited 100 years in the lab. Instead, the team measured how quickly N6 decays under controlled conditions, and used that data to calculate the lifetime from the energy barrier. 
When N6 finally decomposes, it produces mostly N2, the same gas already filling our air. No carbon dioxide, no toxic ash, just nitrogen, plus a large pulse of released energy. That clean finish is one reason people are excited, even though the molecule is fragile. How it was made, chemistry at the speed of a blink. Making N6 is a race, because the clock starts the moment the molecule forms. The team used silver azide as a starting compound, then reacted it with chlorine gas or bromine. Silver azide is nitrogen rich, but it is also famously sensitive and can detonate from shock or friction, so the entire procedure demands extreme caution. In that reaction pathway, N6 appears as a fleeting product. The real trick was not only forming it, but catching it before it could rearrange. To keep it from collapsing in these first milliseconds, the scientists trapped it inside an argon matrix, cooled to minus 196 degrees Celsius. Argon is inert, so it does not attack the fragile molecule. At that temperature, argon becomes a rigid solid, like a frozen cage. N6 ends up immobilized and separated from other reactive species, which prevents the collisions that would speed up its breakup. This matrix isolation approach is a classic way to study short-lived species, but doing it for a neutral polynitrogen this large is what makes the work stand out. That is why the exact temperature matters, and why liquid nitrogen is the practical tool here. Once trapped, the team could probe the molecule with advanced spectroscopy and confirm its identity. This step is the difference between a theoretical sketch and a verified discovery. They did not just predict N6, they measured it. For a molecule this brief, that is a triumph. The energy number. Why people mention rockets. Hexanitrogen's energy release is the headline. The reported value is about 9.2 megajoules per kilogram when N6 returns to N2. That is more than twice TNT on a mass basis, and the original researchers describe it as roughly one and a half times the energy of HMX, a well-known high explosive. What makes it even more striking is the product. The decomposition mostly gives nitrogen gas, which is non-toxic and non-corrosive. So, in theory, you get a powerful burst without the usual carbon-based smoke and greenhouse gases. There is also a practical angle that people forget. A lot of explosives leave solid debris that steals energy. N6 mostly becomes gas, and gas expansion is exactly what creates a pressure wave and thrust. That leads to two obvious application dreams. One is explosives with cleaner byproducts. The other is propulsion. Rockets do not need fire so much as they need hot, expanding gas pushed through a nozzle. A molecule that releases a lot of energy and produces a lot of gas quickly fits that logic. The study leader has suggested N6 would not burn like a steady flame. It would deliver a rapid surge of energy and gas, which could be ideal for rocket engines. But energy is only useful when you can control it. A fuel that always releases everything at once is hard to use safely. So today, N6 is not a rocket propellant. It is a signpost showing what nitrogen chemistry could offer if stability and control can be achieved. The reality check. Stability, scale, control, and risk. The biggest limitation is simple. N6 is only stable in extreme cold. 35 milliseconds at room temperature is not a product. It is a lab event. Even a small warming speeds up decomposition, so long-term storage and transport are not realistic right now. The second limitation is scale. Only tiny amounts have been produced and trapped in a matrix. There is no industrial method, and the current route is complex and costly. The third limitation is controlled release. N6 dumps its energy explosively when it decays. That is fine for a detonation, but terrible for a battery or a controllable fuel. Any real technology would need a way to trigger and regulate the breakup on demand. The paper does not solve that, and it is honest about the gap. There is also the uncomfortable question of misuse. A high energy material always raises military and criminal concerns, even if mass production is far away. So why call it a milestone? Because it proves a long-standing idea with hard evidence. 
chemist Carl Christe at the University of Southern California was quoted as calling the work spectacular and Nobel Prize worthy. And the Gissen team suggests that larger clusters, even N10, may now be reachable. The next step many people imagine is not a bigger blast, but a safer container. Could you trap N6 inside a solid framework that holds it steady at higher temperatures? Could you tune the cage so it releases energy impulses instead of one shock? Those are open questions, and they are where the real engineering would begin. For now, N6 is proof that the impossible door can open, even if only in the coldest room on Earth. Hexanitrogen is not something you will pour into a tank next year. It is a fragile snapshot of energy, caught only because scientists moved faster than a blink and colder than winter in space. Still, it asks a huge question. If we learn how to stabilize molecules like N6, could we make cleaner high-energy materials that leave behind almost nothing but air? Or will polynitrogen stay a beautiful lab curiosity, trapped in frozen cages forever? Tell me what you think in the comments. Subscribe and turn on notifications, because the next breakthrough might already be forming in a flask today.